Great, thanks. So, hi, um, my name's Ben Bull. I'm with Oregon Tilth. Oregon Tilth is an organic certifier based out of uh, Corvallis, Oregon, but we certify farms across the country and also internationally. And in addition to certification, we have some education programs. And one of those is a uh, agreement that we've had with USDA NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, since 2010. And we provide um, training and technical resources and um, help out NRCS staff about specifically with working with organic producers. So I'm going to be talking on some of our experience around that. And I also worked on this with Jen, who is the uh, West Region Soil Health Team Leader, and uh, that the West Region covers everything from Hawaii and Alaska all the way over, I think, New Mexico. And so she helps train staff at NRCS and work with producers on um, soil health to health topics and oversees some staff in that region. And Jen and I are both housed out of an NRCS office in Portland, Oregon. It's a tech support center for other NRCS, and we've collaborated together on working with some organic producers, uh, doing some workshops and thinking about this kind of nexus of soil health and organic. And uh, so since this time of, since I mentioned 2010 that we've been working with NRCS, there's been a lot of emphasis on soil health at NRCS and it's grown. And, and in 2014, uh, NRCS established a soil health division and as I'm sure all of you know, there's been a lot of communications and things around from NRCS about soil health. The, the image on the right there shows the kind of four principles of soil health from NRCS about diversity, keeping the soil covered, minimizing disturbance, and maximizing living roots. And so for my presentation, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I don't have data to present, but rather I wanted to share some kind of lessons and some takeaways that I've seen from our time of communicating soil health principles and concepts to organic producers and to ag professionals, NRCS staff, who are then going to go on ahead and work with organic producers. And uh, the lessons are kind of not in a particular order, and I do think that they're applicable to um, conventional producers in some cases as well, but these are ones I sort of see as experience of working with organic. So the first one is to kind of think of soil health principles, and I'm, I'm specifically thinking about those four principles that NRCS focuses on, but those principles as a range, um, not as absolutes. And so I think it's particularly important um, we're talking to producers who are just starting to explore soil health, but also for experienced um, producers. And by that, by a range, I mean that if there's not just tillage and uh, no tillage. There are things in between and there's lots of nuance between uh, those kind of ends of a spectrum and that there's a lot of value in keeping that in mind when communicating with uh, producers, especially organic producers. And so, you know, I think organic producers can certainly minimize tillage. Uh, they can uh, reduce the amount of disturbance and so that can be either the number of passes in the field, things that folks have talked about already, or finding just portions of their field to perform tillage or um, other disturbance, the type of equipment that they have available. But for most organic producers, it's very challenging to eliminate tillage completely. So I think by thinking about that specific principle of disturbance within a range is really helpful in talking with organic producers, not trying to, um, not trying to make it a, that they have to get to no-till to be successful in terms of implementing soil health principles. And, you know, it's used for weed control, but also in certain systems like growing potatoes, it's hard to harvest potatoes if we don't have any disturbance of the soil, for example. And uh, kind of also on this spectrum, it's relevant to other principles. So I would say plant diversity. There's lots of different ways to increase diversity in the system. And so we could have a more complex crop rotation, for example, um, maybe interseeding a cover crop into a standing cash crop, as in this picture, or then thinking about if you're using cover crops to increase the number of species. And so again, it's just a um, sort of a range. It's not a, a um, definite end point and beginning point. 
So another principle that I think, or a lesson um, in terms of talking with organic producers or organic audience around these soil health principles is that some principles are just inherently harder to implement in certain cropping systems. And so this isn't, I guess, uh, specific to organic, but I wanna use it in an organic context. So a lot of organic producers do grow specialty crops. They grow vegetables, not all, but many. And there are some vegetables that are just really hard to grow without some disturbance. And so it's challenging to uh, prep a bed to grow carrots in if you don't use any disturbance to prepare that seed bed. And um, also I think um, having living roots and keeping the soil covered year round or is, is, is can be really challenging in some systems. And so, for example, uh, it's hard to get in an early season spring vegetable crop. And so, you know, we can think about using a cover crop that winter kills to help address that. Um, but in terms of cover crops, I think there's oftentimes trade-offs that organic producers as other producers are thinking about. And so um, they might be using their uh, cover crops to provide nitrogen and using them for that purpose versus building up soil organic matter. Um, another lesson learned, again, relevant, not just to organic, but that regional and climate variations are really important to keep in mind. And so here, this was, uh, was up with NRCS in Alaska, and it just, the, the challenge of a very short growing season makes it difficult to, you know, include cover crops or to, um, keep the soil covered year round and have that living root because they have such a, a short growing season. And then uh, I think also cover crop establishment um, can be really challenging in non-irrigated areas, really dry areas as well. And, you know, so slugs, I know they plague producers in different parts of the country, but in Western Oregon, where I'm from, slugs are, are definitely a big problem and not just for organic producers, but one of the main um, tools that producers use is tillage uh, to address slugs. And there just are very few other options to address those. And so it's not just weed control that organic producers are having to resort to tillage for, but also some pests um, that are uh, really prevalent and can cause a lot of problems such as slugs in the Pacific Northwest. And um, so another lesson learned is that many organic practices are good in terms of soil health, but um, more is not always better. And for this one, I'm specifically thinking about additions of organic matter. And so Additions of organic matter can help offset some of the negative impacts of disturbance. So helping to keep those organic, um, organic levels high, but you know, excessive levels of compost and manure can be bad in terms of other environmental impacts. And so it can result in these really high levels of phosphorus, which is just another challenge for organic producers if they're really reliant on those materials to offset some of their disturbance. And another thing seen is that uh, just a real value and importance of designing any outreach materials to design them if you're focusing on organic producers to really uh, include organic producers and design them specifically for that audience. And so I'm sure many of you have seen these, but NRCS for a while was doing these profiles, videos and uh, written profiles on producers that were implementing soil health principles across the country. A lot of them were uh, no-till producers in the upper Midwest, which is great, and they're doing a really good job, those conventional producers imp implementing soil health principles. But those weren't really speaking, I think, to um, an organic producer. And so NRCS uh, went out and interviewed several organic producers in um, Iowa and also in Oregon and created these other these profiles specifically talking about um, organic producers as they try to implement soil health principles in their operation, some of the specific challenges, some of the things that they are doing on their farms to kind of have success with soil health. And there's new resources that just come out, which I'm particularly excited about. NRCS 
worked with the lexicon of sustainability to develop these new materials, specifically about NRCS's support for organic producers. And they're really cool because they use, um, as the name lexicon of sustainability in place, uses somebody else's language. It wasn't uh, NRCS sort of language in them. And so I think they do a good job of communicating to organic producers. And we've had a lot of success taking these out to some of the organic conferences and some really good feedback. And just wanted to say cheers to Suzanne Pender from NRCS and Lindsay Haynes who really got these through. It was a big deal to get something like this through at NRCS. And here's just an example of one there are posters and there are also videos and there is a booklet of all of these different profiles and topics, including this one here on uh, uh, crop residue, just to give an example. And another lesson is just that uh, resources and decision tools are important for organic producers. And uh, Doug had just mentioned this a, a few minutes ago, but o Oregon State University, this just is an example of the type of tool, Oregon State University developed this cover crop calculator, which allows producers to compare um, the cost and the nutritional, the nutrient value of different inputs and different materials, and you can compare cover crops there. And it kind of makes the case, I think, in a lot of instances for using cover crops for fertility because you're able to compare them on a like for like in terms of the cost basis. It kind of helps, uh, helps producers think about those things. And another um, lesson I would say, which been learned for this, I think relevant for other topics as well, but just the real value of peer-to-peer -peer education and information exchange um, so Oregon Tilth partnered with NRCS and Oregon State University to do a report recently about the transition to organic. We reached out to lots of producers who had been transitioning, have successfully transitioned, and those who were not successful. And we found that there was just, they placed a very high value on the um, getting their information from experienced producers. And so I would say that in conveying soil health principles, um, it's, it's relevant here as well, that this is, there's real value of including producers in uh, workshops and outreach and those sorts of things to talk about how they've been successful in their farm. And we have a, a conference in the Pacific Northwest called the Farmer to Farmer Exchange, which is just another example of that, um, that model. And it's often cited as a sort of favorite conference of producers in the Pacific Northwest. They find a lot of value with it. And uh, kind of in closing here, I just want to say another lesson learned that we all know is that the organic regulations and practices do align really well with natural resource conservation and soil health principles. So we know in the organic regulations that there's a crop rotation requirement, there's a discussion of erosion, there's discussion about building soil organic matter. Specifically, the regulation states that producers must select and implement tillage and cultivation practices that maintain or improve the physical, chemical, and biological condition of soil and minimize soil erosion. And so producers can be doing lots of things to meet these objectives, including cover crops, interseeding. Um, a a uh, picture here of a livestock producer, maybe a, designing a rotational grazing system to help build soil health and meet the requirements about organic matter, or dry matter input. And uh, finally, I would just say that I think a lot of organic producers care very deeply about soil. It might be a, a big motivating factor for them to be organic producers. Um, and that I think there's a lot of opportunities to work with them to increase soil health, to implement more principles and to kind of move them further along on, on the spectrum. I'd say, uh, let's not beat up on them for using some tillage or figure out how they can reduce using some of the tillage. And I really do appreciate all the work that's going on. Um, and it's been mentioned today and at other universities about how to reduce tillage, I think is one of the biggest challenges and just that uh, we need more of that. And uh, I'd love if there was a second, if anybody had any other lessons learned or any other questions. Thanks.